you know, I haven't been watching Brent Fias for years. Then he's somebody to really go back, do a deep dive in the way this man is built up. Like uh, you, you just got to do it because he's built indie. I mean, he's performing better than a lot of R and B artists. Mm-hmm. I think what is he around like ten or seventeen million streams? Some some crazy like some something. He is up there, and we're talking about you know pretty legit and indie as indie can legitimately be. Yeah, like, let, let's let's say that right. So with that being said, in this clip right here. Brent Fiaz's manager reveals how he built his fan base with independent touring and ads. Last year, 22-year-old R&B singer Brent Fiaz caught a break. What were they offering? Well, I know the highest offer we got was kind of like a quarter million dollar advance, and it was like a three hundred thousand dollar quarter budget for for album one. I always said it was never about the money; it was always about the term. They began by incorporating Lost Kids LLC and investing $30,000 out of their own pockets to record Brent's debut album. They then went on a three-month tour using streaming data to guide the way. Yeah, no, definitely. We need to know about all analytics, all data. There has been several debating deaths filed a music to Pandora. Time mines the data for those streams to find out exactly where and when a show will sell out. I'm looking at my Spotify and my SoundCloud analytics, like the top 50 market. I'm doing ads based on those top 50 markets. I was spending money there because that's what the data already told me. All right, all right. Now, many of y'all might have seen this clip. I've definitely shared it on my page or reposted it before. It's been, a, this is nothing new. This is a Vice News story. Um, EJ, we can put the link in the description for for folks who want to check out the pool thing when they watch the pod. But what I love about this clip is it's very simple with strategy, right? We do shows, mm-hmm. we do music, we do ads, right? Very easy, very replicable. Very easy, very replicable. And we've seen this and we've done this before with multiple artists and it works. It's an older school strategy. It's, it's crazy, like Facebook ads, it's like old school now, right? <laughs> or Instagram ads or just ads in general, but it does work. And the thing about this though, that I, I love the most is just strategy. And I, I mm-hmm. always bring this up. Like so many people are running ads thinking, how cheap can I get ads? Like my click through, how cheap can I get my conversion? If you're clever. Nobody's attaching it to an actual strategy, though, right? And the part that takes it away from the strategy is just focusing on those direct numbers. These guys tie in um, Brent. Oh, these are my cities that are like top for my music. We can all see this. We're all aware of this. Like we're like, oh yeah, a lot of people in Atlanta like my music. A lot of people in I don't know LA seem, seem to like my music. But then people get afraid when they start running some ads and they see the ads are more expensive because you're fo- focused on a tighter market. You're not just doing world worldwide ads where everything's going to be cheaper because you got more people to just, you know, in, in uh, to auction with. Cool, but it's more meaningful and worse having more expensive ads if it's tied to something legitimate at the end. If you're going to do a show there, yeah, it might suck that you're getting higher cost per conversion at that time but if it's going to lead to you doing something real that you can't get done when you're doing worldwide ads because i got a hundred fans in this city five fans in that city a thousand fans over here like it's so spread out you lose out and so now i don't know how to just i can't go do a show in a market where there's only five fans it's not gonna be worth it I can't even break even. And a lot of these times, the goal is just to break even to make them stronger uh, fans, right? But you do this for years and you're touching it like target the market, touch base with the fans. Target the market, touch base with the fans. Sell them some merch, mm-hmm. all right? Make it a little bit more real. I break even with the show, I make money with, with the merch. Break even with the show, make money with your merch. And, and that starts to build. Next thing you know, I might even make money with the show and then go crazy with the merch, right? You repeat that enough. Things build, you end up with a Brent Fias. Well, so when the music's good, right? And other factors at hand. But it's really not like, you know, rocket science. Mm-hmm. But it is having strategy. It doesn't have to be 
targeting a specific city and like, planning to do a tour or anything. There's other strategies, but you have to attach it to something because all of these cost per clicks are meaningless when if you're just focused on how cheap can I get my ass and not how little money can I spend. Like that's that's always my gripe when it comes to ads and how people approach it. There's no long term and people really in this space we get caught up or we conflate strategy and tactics. And really people are very tactical, very little strategy. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's even what I liked about his clip is, you know, I have a lot of artists who will hit me asking exactly that, like, what is the ad strategy to start with? And yeah, you could argue that his strategy was, you know, a touring based ad strategy which anybody could do, but where you target is going to change that, that strategy for you exactly right. Exactly. Because we don't even know about the other nuances that went into that, right? I'm assuming that if I'm an artist that's, and my data is showing me that I should tour in, let's say like DC, Virginia, New York, that's going to, that's going to move my strategy differently than the artists that's saying that, hey, I'm big in Houston, Dallas, Austin, or something like that, right? Because they know like culturally the places are different. So yeah. that opens up to different types of activations and partnerships and, and, and things like that, right? So I think just even, even just realizing that the data can be that to be a guide for you is really valuable because I think that so many artists try to fight against the data because they don't want to feel like the algorithm is controlling their career, right? Like, yeah, Spotify is telling me Atlanta's my, my popping city, but fuck Atlanta. I don't want to walk in Atlanta. I'm going to go build in LA because I want to do a show in LA, which, you know, like you said, there's a strategy behind it. Go for it. Do your thing. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, for you know most other cases, it's almost like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Like, you've already kind of done some of the free leg work to see that this is where your money should be spent. Why not go along with that? You know what I'm saying? Why not dig the hole that's already spitting up a little bit of oil? You know what I'm saying? Instead of digging all completely new. So that's what, I, that's what always got me about that clip was he was one of the first people I'd ever heard be so for the data in that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially at the time, a lot of artists at that time were, were bragging about not looking at analytics and stuff like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but I agree with you, man. I think like, it, this is also a show that ads can be a lot more useful than, than a lot of artists think they are. And I think because of what you're saying, there's a stigma behind ads where 98% of people's objective is just to get the cheapest cost per click conversion as possible, right? Yep. And so when that's the bar for everybody, it, it, it makes it to where it's easy for people to say this thing works or this thing doesn't work, right? Uh, but ads are a lot more nuanced than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we've had campaigns before where the cost of the ad was expensive, and from the artist's perspective, it was a fail. But then once we start explaining certain things, it's like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. It's, it's work. I'm like, yeah, man, like you paying for a, a more premium of a market. You know what I'm saying? You paying so you paying it's two dollars so this shit don't optimize in Brazil. We get you that that point oh oh one. That's what you want. You know what I'm saying? But you know, if we're gonna build towards some type of like longer term play then this is just the cost of like doing that. This is the cost of that strategy, right? And so people have to think about it. Like there is a cost with each marketing strategy that you implement, right? My ad strategy for an artist only wanting to build internationally is going to be cheaper than my ad strategy for the artist that wants to build domestically. You know what I'm saying? It's just the nature of the game. But I will be wrong to tell either of them that, that if they have strategy behind it, that either of them is right or wrong, right? Like this artist is like, hey, I, I got this grand vision of popping in Brazil first, and then I'm going to go over there and I'm going to do a, a Latin tour. And I'm gonna take that money and come back in America and I'm gonna invest, blah, blah, blah. Right? Why, why, his or her strategy isn't any more wrong or right than the artist is like, hey, I'm gonna pop it on first and then build a, a buzz in my own city and I'm gonna sell merch doing local shows and I'm gonna take, right? It's the same, same end result, you know what I'm saying? Different path that you walk, that you kind of walk to get there. That right there is a level of focus, which implies strategy. Brazil first, that's still specific, even though yeah. Brazil has many cities and 
uh, states or provinces, whatever they call them, right? And then your hometown, like there's that's something more specific, better spec, more specific, more likely you actually have a strategy, yeah, right, or something closer to it, resembling, um, because you got people who are like their strategy, quote unquote. Is to run ads and try to make money from streams. Yeah, crazy. Everybody that ever asks that, I just want you to know it's a it's a hamster wheel of a mission that you run on. Unless unless you crack into point oh 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 one places, you know what I'm saying? Like even then, yeah, that they streams don't pay as much. <laughs> it's, it's a hard thing to do to literally just run ads to your stream and make money. That should not be your plan. There are moments when you do make your money back because triggers an algorithm starts to move, so you're your song starts to work beyond the money that you spent. Mm -hmm. But if that's your plan going into it, the expectation you want to put on the marketer or your manager or whoever, then that's a faulty mission. That's a, that's a four or five year play. Well, well I always ask them like, hey man, do you have the time <laughs> to do that strategy? That's yeah. a four or five year play right there. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's definitely um, going to be a longer play in many cases. Now, you think about something well i was gonna say you know this whole conversation makes me think of but we're literally watching this happen in real time what right or recently adrian campaign bro oh, yeah. like adrian milanio uh one of our clients who's having you know a lot of success right now in, in thailand and the philippines and i remember 2020 when he was like hey i think i want to take the next couple of years and just focus on the philippines and thailand because i think that they'll take to me because I, I make army music and i look the way i do and at the time man, you know we you know, all the, 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 the traditional, you know, uh, what's pink, what's red and, and green mixed together? What color is that? Purple. Part, red and green is purple? Oh, that's red and blue. Uh, red and green? Yellow? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know my colors, man. I don't roast me. But whatever that color flag is, you know, we were seeing those flags being way it was like, all right, man, your, your, your cost per click in Thailand is looking suspicious, but he's telling us, hey, but now nah, I'm getting deals in, in, in their language and, they, and they're telling me things, right? And so, like, he stuck that strategy out for two years. And then the song sparked on Spotify viral 50 for those countries. And now that long term players worked out. It is, it is yellow? It's yellow. I, I'm good, bro. It's talking Look at that. Man, I knew, hey, man, art school, bro. Yeah, paid off. Mary Color Wheel. <laughs> the graphic design, my bro. Paid off, man. All my colors. But, <laughs> but it's like, that's the same shit, right? Like, he, it's like, who are we in the moment to say, like, this is wrong or right? I was just glad he had a strategy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I'm like, hey, man, we could always look back on this a year or two from now and say, hey, that was a good idea. That wasn't a good idea because the reality of it is, to your point about the tactics versus strategies, that's how I look at it. Tactics are something that could be completed within a couple of days to a couple of months. Strategies take years. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do I know if my strategy to build my social prominence in Atlanta work if I don't at least have two years to go about to see how people talk about me? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's the same shit. So, like, to enact most of those strategies, like, you need long term vision and the patience to kind of act it out. So, I, a lot of times, am, am even if I disagree with clients' marketing campaigns sometimes, like a lot of times just them having a thought behind what, or having a why for why they want to do things is enough to convince me. Because you know I mean? then I started thinking, like, well, maybe they thought about this deeper than I thought about it. You know I mean? Maybe they've seen something. Yeah. That, uh, or at the very least, I know that they have a vision, an idea, and they're willing to trust it out long enough to, to, to make some assessments off of it. And like, you know, like you said, music is good and other things are there. Typically, it works out long term, you know, and I'm really big on painting to at least the clients I get to talk to, but definitely any artist that talks to me, where I'll tell them like, hey, you know, there are gonna be things that we do for you where you won't even really see the impact of it for like three or four months. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so in the moment it's gonna feel like it's not working, but then three or four months later you're gonna look at them like, damn, no, that shit worked. Like I can I can feel where this came from and people are saying certain things to me and my shit just spiked out of nowhere. Right? Like I literally had a client um a couple weeks ago hit me. Her manager hit me it was like, yeah, man, you know, in the moment, like, the artist wasn't really happy with y'all campaign, but she was just talking to us, like, man, they did a great job. Like, I'm looking at my analytics and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and I, I told her, I was like, three years. I love to look at when it is. It's three, four months ago from when we did the campaign. You know what I'm saying? Three months have went by. I'm like, so so I think that's a lot of times what deters the artist from, like, making strategies, like, those kind of concrete strategies. Like, you can't really gauge them in the short term. Like, a, a strategy, a real strategy takes faith. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. you got to like, believe. Yeah, man. Like, day by day, man, this shit dropping down or spiking weird but you're like nah man I, I feel it man i got one new follower from atlanta he's saying great things this this strategy to build me in atlanta is, is moving it's moving slow but it's moving you know what i'm saying yeah. um and i'm big on if it's moving up man it's a good sign as long as it's uptrending that's right, a good time keep it, keep it pushing so yeah. but 
that was what I liked about the, the talk club, man. It's just like one, just I think more artists need to be understand need to understand that the data can be a tool for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, and sometimes if you don't feel like you have enough information to make these strategic decisions that Sean and I are talking about, like that's why these different tools exist to give you as much information as possible to to help you make the best, most calculated decision that you possibly can. Right. Um, and the second thing is like, yeah, bro, the ad strategy is deep. You know what I'm saying? Like he talked about one, he essentially is doing like the tour building strategy, but it's like it can get deep, right? Well, I know we got at least like seven, eight yeah. different ones. We can just whip out the bucket, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit need to go a certain way. And so it's like if you're reading this or not reading this, listen to this and you've had your skepticism with advertisement, you feel like advertisement's don't work for you, you know what I'm saying? Very rarely is the canvas the reason that the painting is trash. You know what I'm saying? Very very rarely is the is the paintbrush the reason that the painting is trash. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave that one there. Let, let that one soak. But I will say <laughs> the other benefit of like focus mm-hmm. that people have to have faith to get to that moment in time when you're focused on a specific thing. I've said this plenty of times. All right. You can have a moment like Shakur, you pull up today, you play a song, and I'm like, oh, shoot, bro. You know that song? Bro, that's my song. I just discovered that song from some ad the other day or some influencer in this market. Then you have somebody else. Oh, snap, you know that song? Like, that organic spread is something that's not going to happen Our marketing in all these random different places, mm-hmm. right? So if I spend more money marketing here, again, it's more expensive in the short term. But once I hit a certain threshold, you start to have an organic effect mm-hmm. where all these people in that same market actually know who you are has some type of experience so then they start to spread it and share it and now they have that powerful experience of experiencing it with other people and we know that's the lock we talk about how nostalgia really builds moments up and makes music more important to us than it actually was and even the main the, the time well if more of us know this song we can create these experiences together. If we have experiences together, especially if they're positive, we're going to want to replay this song, right? So this is how you start to build that and become a part of people's lives as an artist, by being focused in a specific place and being able to take over that location and then find another location. And then next thing you know, you got the whole state, you got the whole country, and maybe, you know, if you're that type of artist and that's your goal, you might have the whole world. So it's something to consider. But staying in the, the touring space. Well, Russell, 